Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about control system topics and we continue with the subject of stability and in particular the Nyquist stability criterion using the Nyquist plot and we will look at the system with a time delay. Now again we will calculate the required values and we will verify our calculation using the simulation and this is our example number two. So let's look at the example. What we have is the following situation. We have a control system as shown here. We have the K, which is actually our controller K. We have a plan G and there is a sensor in the feedback loop. So now controller is K. The plant is given as a second order system with its delay, which has a time delay of 0 0.2 seconds. And the sensor is a first order system. Now the question in place here is calculate the range of the controller gain to have a stable close-up system and use Nyquist stability criterion. Now again as we did in the previous example, example number one about this, uh, th these kind of uh, problems, what we do is first determine the loop gain LS of the system. Now loop transfer function of the loop gain is very easily determined by making a first circle. So you start at one point and you come back at the same point. In this case, the LS will be the K times G times H. So it's actually shown here. Now, if I now substitute the values given also here, I have the following expression. Now, what you need to do, of course, is you, since you need to analyze this in the frequency domain, we need to convert this to the J omega domain. So we need to convert it from the S domain to the J omega domain. So you replace everywhere is to the S to J to omega. Of course, you rewrite this, simplify this. You can make eight times 20, it will be 160. The K can be also placed in the numerator and the S plus, S plus four times, S plus five times, S plus eight can be placed in the denominator. So we have actually the following expression and we have this exponential term here at the end. Now, what we also need to do is in the further analysis, it will be handy to rewrite this using Euler's identity or Euler's formula. So e to the power minus j 0.2 omega will be written in this form. So it's in cosine and sine terms. Now, what I also need to do is if I just add that here in the next step, what I also need to do is I want to have in the denominator a real expression. So what I do is I will work this out. First do that. So it is actually the next step. So I have worked this out the denominator. So the numerator is just as this, but the denominator is now a expression which has a real part and an imaginary part. Now the next step here is I want to have a real expression for the denominator. What I do is I can multiply the numerator and the denominator of this expression with the complex conjugate of this denominator. That is a way to get rid of this expression, which is now given in the real and imaginary parts. So if I do that, just explicitly shown here that this is the complex conjugate of this one. And then if you do that, you will have the square of this plus the square of that one. Of course, the J will drop off. This is just a parameter, an operator for the imaginary part. Then you will have the following expression. Now, what you then do in the next analysis is you work out actually this parentheses that you have a complete expression where you see the, the real part, which is actually shown in blue and the red part, which is actually the imaginary part. And this is now the real part in the denominator. Now the next step is just look at the situation, how we can determine the critical values for our frequency and also for our gain. Now this plot will be again helpful in understanding for the next steps. This is our Nyquist plot or polar plot. What you can see is that the polar plot will determine actually for each point the magnitude of the loop transfer function, also the phase at that point. Now, if I have, if I want a phase shift of minus 180 degrees at that situation, I will have a condition for stability criterion of Nyquist. So if I want a 
phase shift of minus 180 degrees, I will have a point at this uh, at this part of the graph. So at this point we will have a phase contribution of minus 180 degrees. Now if I want to have a uh, my point here, the phase contribution of minus 180 degrees, I need to make the imaginary part zero. So that means actually for this expression, I need to make the imaginary part zero. So this will result then in the critical frequency, omega critical. Now, if I now want to have the omega critical for stability, let's then make the imaginary part of this loop transfer function zero. So this expression, just only the imaginary part will be set to zero. Now, of course, it's a little bit complicated expression. If you just solve this and you will take the smallest value of the omega, the first one, then you will have the following X, uh, result, 4.8 radians per second, and this is now defined as omega critical. Now, we will now use this in the further steps. Now, if you substitute the value of omega critical, 4.8 radians per second, into the loop gain expression, or L of j omega, we get the following expression. Now, I've just, uh, denoted this in blue. So this large expression, which is now substituted by omega as 4.8, is shown here. Now, what you know is that the real part is here, and the imaginary part which is now minus 404, if you just substitute the values, and an imaginary part is shared. Now that imaginary part is of course zero. Why? Because we have made the imaginary part in this expression for the loop gain equal to zero, and that gave us 4.8 radians per second. So it is not a surprise that this is a zero. Now if I now work this out, I have now 160k divided by this number, that will be k over 1020 and this is just between the parentheses it is actually minus 404 plus j0 which is actually shown here now if i simplify this further i have now that the loop transfer function at the critical frequency of 4.8 radians per second will be minus 0 0.3961 times k Okay, now the next step, step four, is actually determine the critical value, k critical, for stability. Now that means actually the loop transfer function must be set to equal to zero, I mean minus one, when the uh, critical frequency is substituted in the loop transfer function. So I have to set this equal to minus one. That's actually the following step. That means minus zero point 3961k is equal to minus 1. Now, if you do the math here, you will get 2.52 is our k, which is now defined as the critical gain. Now, if you make the critical in your controller gain larger than this number, the loop gain will encircle the minus 1,0. That is actually that point, which is the point where you determine the stability using the Nyquist stability criterion. So that makes the system also unstable. So I want to stay away from that point. That means I cannot blow up my polar, polar plot uh, such that I encircle this point. So minus 1,0. So what I need to do is I need to stay away from this value. So I need to make this smaller than that value. So the k must be smaller than this one. And k is also positive, so we have two conditions. Now, if you combine them and you want to have a stable closed system, that means we require k is larger than zero, but smaller than 2.52. That is the conclusion from our calculations. So let's now look at the simulation results. Let's first start with the body plot of the loop gain with a controller gain of k is one. So that is actually the first step. Let's look at the situation. What we have is then the uh, loop transfer function L1. I've just denoted this as L1 for the situation for the controller gain of k is equal to 1. Now what you see is here, that is the phase and the magnitude. For the phase, I have purposely looked at the minus 180 degrees and I see that the frequency is 4.8 radians per second. So this is actually also our critical frequency. Now the associated gain with that one is minus 
8.08 dB. Now, what is the meaning of this? That means actually the following. Your, your allowed loop gain is now 8.08 dB. Why? Because at phase of minus 180 degrees, I have a gain of eight, minus 8.08 dB. That means in order to reach the 0 dB, which is actually just 1, I can add a gain or loop gain of the positive value of this. So it is actually 8.08 dB. So uh, there is a room for a loop gain for, in this case, of 8.08 dB. So if I now, of course, convert this in the units, in a different unit, that will result in 2.54. Now, what I have calculated was 2.52. So it's really close to what we have calculated. So it also converts nicely what we have done in our calculations. Again, the critical frequency is 4.8 radians per second. And that is, again, confirmed in our simulation. I can also do that with a Nyquist plot. Again, the same condition. Control again is just one. And what you see is the blue line is the polar plot that will encircle actually all the way in the origin. What you see is the gain margin is 8.05, which is really close to 8.08 .08 dBs. The frequency, again, the, the critical frequency of 4.8 is again shown here. And what you also see here, I've placed an additional uh, label where you see the Imaginary part is made almost zero. It was not possible to make it exactly zero. And you can see the real part is now minus 0 0.394. And that is actually an information for us to uh, determine how much loop gain I can add. So this is the label for our uh, gain margin and also the, which where you can see the critical frequency. And this is the additional label I've added such that you can see that the imaginary part is indeed very close to zero and the associated real part. So, if I look at the gain margin, 8.05 dB, that means the allowed loop gain is also 8.05 dB, which is very close to what we have determined from the body plot. Now, again, if I look at now the real part, which is now this value, minus, three point, minus 0 0.394, if you now have a loop gain you want to add, you can go all the way to the minus one until you reach the unstable region. So I can add one over this number, which is 2.54. That is actually the calculation we have also seen in the body, I mean the result in the body plot for, for in the simulation. So this also confirms our calculations very really nicely because we had 2.52. And that is actually really close to the 2.54 what we have here. So the small error is actually due to the rounding F errors. So that converts also our calculations nicely. So let's look at the situation where we have exactly the 2.52 from our calculations. So the body plot first. What we have is the L1 now, in this case, the critical situation. I have now, again, look at the phase and the gain of this system. At the minus 180 degrees, I see again the same frequency and associated with that one, I see the magnitude is almost zero, which is now the situation where you have almost no allowed loop gain. So almost zero dB what is now allowed as a loop gain. Now this is the edge of stability. That is actually what you also confirmed that this gain of K is equal to 2.52 is really the maximum. Okay, now let's look at also the Nyquist plot, also from the controller gain of K, 2.52. This is now the plot, which you see is again the gain margin, which is now here. It's very, uh, very small, close to zero dBs. And the frequency is that the same, 4.8 radians per second. And if you now add an additional label I add here, you can make the imaginary part almost zero, but the real part is very close to minus one. So that means actually when you make the real part very close to zero, and for this value of the controller gain, I made my real part almost minus one. That means from the origin all the way to that point, I've reached actually a gain of or loop gain of almost one. That's actually what this means. 
that means that this is really the edge of the stability. So real value is almost minus one. There's no room actually for additional loop gain. And that is what's shown here. Okay. Now let's look at also the unit step response of the closed loop system, but then start with the case one. So this is actually the result. Again, the situation is stable, but the overhead is quite large, 42%, and the system has a uh, setting time is 3.3 seconds. So what we will see is that it's stable, but it has a large overshoot and also the settling time is quite large, but it is stable. So it is in terms of stability, no problem. If I now look at the unit step response for the close-up system with a controller gain of 2.52, which we have calculated as the maximum, then I have the following. Again, what you see is this system now is at the edge of stability. So it is going almost unstable and this also confirms that this is really the maximum and it is now our oscillation which is the edge of stability. Now if I want to uh, compare the results in the simulation of the system with a time delay and system without a time delay I have the following situation in Nyquist plot. So the blue line is actually the situation where you have absolutely no time delay which is just you know this L0 and the orange line is actually the situation where you have the time delay in the example given. So what you see is at this point which is now labeled here we have uh, uh, some value so that is actually the uh, the gain which you have for this frequency so you can add actually this much gain in order to you get at the edge of instability but for the system including the delay I have actually made the headroom smaller so that delay has again caused in this case for a second order system that the additional loop gain I can add is smaller than the, the pure second order system for my uh, exercise. So if I have an, again, if I have a delay in my system, can be a second order, can be a first order, that will always decrease my stability and always uh, lower the additional loop gain I can add for this system. Okay, this is our second example. We're using a second order system and then having a time delay and we have now discussed step by step again our uh, uh, problem here and we have determined the maximum allowed the value of the K for the controller gain and we have seen what will happen when you open uh, when you make the time delay uh, in, a, in a second order system in fact a second order system pure second order system will never uh, be unstable but if you have an additional delay that can make this system unstable Okay, thank you very much again for your attention. I hope this clarifies the situation in this example using a second order system also in more detail. I will continue with another example, then look specifically at the time delay value. And that is another example and it will be uploaded shortly. So keep in touch and if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And take care.